Highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Cooks River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's inner west. In the late 19th century, cheap land and available river road and rail transport attracted industries to the Concord area. This continued after both world wars. Farley Netheim opened a tannery in 1880. The company manufactured King of Mimosa sole leather and a range of other products. When it closed in 1967, the site was sold to the Department of Education for the construction of Concord High School. In 1884, the Australian Gaslight Company purchased land at Mortlake and commenced gas production two years later. The gasworks dominated the landscape until its closure in 1990. The site was redeveloped for medium density housing known as Breakfast Point. Arnott's Biscuit Factory opened in 1908. The factory site fronting George Street North Strathfield has been redeveloped as the Bakehouse Quarter. Near Rhodes Railway Station, the C.G. Hoskins Cast Iron Pipe Factory operated from 1911 until 1930 when it moved to Port Kembla. The site was then occupied by CSR Chemicals, which became ICI then Orica until 1997 when redeveloped as high-density housing. CSR owned Concord Plaster Mills. The mill opened in 1942 to process gypsum for the manufacture of plaster of Paris for the building trade. The Giprock factory, which opened in 1947, utilised most of the plaster manufactured in the mill. In 1911, a two-hectare site was selected by Westinghouse Brake and Signal Company for its first Australian factory. Between the railway line and Concord Road, Tullox Phoenix Ironworks was a local landmark from its establishment in 1915 until its closure in 1974. When Robert Tullock purchased part of the original Bray property as a location for his engineering business, Bray Grove, the family home, was incorporated into the company's administration block. The manufacture of rolling stock was an important part of the company's activities. By the 1930s, Tullocks were also producing steam engines, wrought iron tubes, garden tools and iron for bridges. 1960s products included foundry goods, rolling stock and locomotives, also a range of portable aluminium and steel buildings. When Tullos shut down, the foundry and other workshops were razed and Bray Grove was demolished. Today, the ironworks are remembered by street names, Tullock Avenue, Phoenix Avenue and Loch Marie Parade, named after Tullock's home in Thornley. A memorial lampstand, erected in 1945 in memory of Robert Tullock by members of his family, stands opposite Rhodes Railway Station in Churchill Tucker Park. The ironworks site is now Rhodes Corporate Park. Lewis Berger started production in 1917 with a factory for processing linseed oil and a paint manufacture building. Today, the site of Rhodes Waterside Shopping Centre, office and apartments. A foreshore park, known as Lewis Berger Park, contains a war memorial in the form of a sundial, which commemorates ex-servicemen from the former factory. Press metal ceilings were manufactured by Wunderlich. Asbestos sheeting was developed by the company. When Wunderlich moved to Rose Hill in the 1950s, the site was purchased by the Southern Can Company, which was later incorporated into Containers Limited, the manufacturing of cans for food and drink packaging ended in 1982. The land was sold to its neighbour, Welcome Australia. The Welcome Complex was, in 1919, the site of William Cooper and Nephews, whose factory produced sheep dip. Cooper's diversified to produce veterinary and horticultural products. In 1959, the company was purchased by the Welcome Foundation, a worldwide chemical and pharmaceutical company. Rhodes House was demolished in 1918 when John Darling and Son purchased the land for a flour mill. The company was taken over in 1960 by Allied Mills and in 1963 a subsidiary of this firm, Allied Feeds. 
Grain and other raw materials were taken by road and rail to the factory where they were converted to pellets, mash and cubes of stock food. The site has been redeveloped as high-density housing. Founded in 1920, Ryder and Bell Engineering was the only producer in Australia of Feynman's brass helmets. Production commenced in 1941 for the New South Wales Fire Brigade. The company also produced automotive components and a range of fishing and gardening equipment. Dulux Australia Limited began operating at Cabarita in 1921 as British Australian lead manufacturers. Balm. The company purchased its first block of land when Corey's Gardens were auctioned. Extra land, including the Strathroy Estate, was acquired. Strathroy House was used for offices. In 1924, Major Brothers moved to Concord when it had outgrown its original factory at Balmain. They manufactured marine paints, boot polish and floor wax. Fires occurred at the factory in the 1920s and 30s. The company sold its land in the 1960s. Originally established as Walters, Middleton and Eads before the First World War, Tanner Middleton built a factory at Exile Bay in 1927. On their four-acre site, the company manufactured a range of products, including flooring, weatherboards, mouldings, windows and other joinery. Timbrell was established in 1925 at Rhodes between John Darling Mills and the Hoskins CSR site. In 1957, it merged with Union Carbide, a major producer of chemicals and extruded polyethylene film. From 1966, another division of the company produced plastic cling wrap for domestic use. The site is now a residential area. In the mid-1930s, George E. Crane established a small brass foundry in Burwood Road for the manufacture of taps. After World War II, the company moved its copper rolling foundry to Concord, to join the brass and aluminium enterprise there. Cooper Crane was the only company to roll brass and copper in Australia and was a manufacturer of high-quality aluminium sheet. In 1968, Cranes merged with Austral Bronze. Today, Austral Wright Metals is part of the Crane Group of Companies, formed by the merger of Austral Bronze Crane Copper and Wright and Company. Greenpoint Naval Boatyard was used to assemble prefabricated naval launches and other vessels during the Second World War. At Commonwealth Shipyard No. 4, small ships were constructed for service in World War II. It was near the road's end of the Kokoda Track Memorial Walk. In Bray's Bay Reserve, a sculpture acknowledges the contribution of those who built the ships and of those that served on them. Paint Industries Australia Proprietary Limited, also known as Anzol, was a Mortlake company which manufactured paints and associated products. It produced a wide range of specialised industrial surface coatings as well as polyester resins for fibreglass and plastics. The company also produced road marking paints and aircraft coatings and provided the paint which coated Australian Defence Force tanks. In 1957-58, Bushels built the first stage of an extensive plant for the roasting and manufacture of ground and instant coffee, the production of coffee essence and the blending and packing of tea and tea bags. The factory, with its B signage, was highly visible in the local area. Today, the site has been redeveloped for residential use. O'Donnell Griffin established premises in Concord in 1962. It had been formed in 1904 as a partnership to install dynamos and generators in factories and workshops. The Concord site was their administrative centre and a major production plant in New South Wales. Electronic Industries opened in 1963. In 1974 it became Phillips Industries. When Phillips purchased Malvern Star, the Rose plant was used to manufacture Malvern Star and Speedwell Bicycles. Phillips sold Malvern Star to Raleigh in 1980. Approval was given in 1982 for a major redevelopment of the site. In the 1980s, Concord supported over 90 industries and commercial enterprises, 
which range from small family-owned businesses to the huge complexes of multinational corporations. A monument commemorating these industries is located at Bayview Park, Concord. Today, the industrial sites have been redeveloped, many of them into residential and recreational areas. The City of Canada Bay Museum features a collection of items that uniquely represent the history of the area. Items representing local industries are featured. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel. It's free. Coming soon, Parramatta, Australia's second oldest settlement. And check out our website, stpeterscooksriverhistory.wordpress.com.